Hello, <laughs> everybody. Welcome to the Citizens Assembly Crucible. Crucible. We'll measure your ideas using a fixed set of principles. I am your host, Sherwin Shao. In this meeting, you'll hear Johnny Garza's idea evaluated by Joe Dunham using Stacy's Gustaf Gustafson's 36 holistic principles. <laughs> At this time, let's uh, introduce ourselves alphabetically. Uh, Cesari, you go first. Yo, yo, yo. This is Cesare. Uh, oh, man. You caught me at the wrong time. And where you're from? Uh, Chicago. <laughs> I'm from Chicago. You can wrap it up. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Uh, Cynthia? Wow, I just came from one fantastic meeting to another fantastic meeting that looks almost exactly like the one I just came from, and I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> and it keeps getting better. Daniel, it you're next. It just gets better. <laughs> uh, hey, Daniel Tweed, KK6VDR, Thousand Oaks, California. And Kevin. Your name and where you're from? Ontario, Canada, uh, Toronto. Okay, Joe, you're next. I'm Joe, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area and I'm gonna try my best to participate today with my limited technology. And uh, sorry for jumping on in your guys' conversation earlier. Joe, Not you even. look like you're freezing your ass off. <laughs> yeah, I am, and there's traffic going by. Johnny, you're next. Johnny Garza from Fort Worth, Texas, revolutionary. All right. And Kevin, oh no, Johnny, we, did we do Kevin already? Yes, Ramses. Yeah, hello guys, you see Ramses, je vis in Montréal, Quebec, Canada, intéressé par informatique, uh, logique, et je suis un ingénieur logiciel. And Stacy. Stacy Gustafson, coming to you from Southwest Texas, where we are freezing our patooties off. <laughs> and Tommy. Uh, you're on mute, Tommy. Uh, Premeditating on that to turn that off before I spoke. Didn't work. Um, so yeah, my name is Tommy. I live in the area of uh, Kokomo, Indiana. Um, and I have a special interest in uh, regenerative and all win politics. All right, Tommy. Thank you, everybody. Um, and I am Sherwin. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. We'll get our meeting started. Our meeting format goes like this. I'm going to share my screen here. Click, click. Okay, so our meeting format will go like this. First, the feature presenter will read his idea from the Agora website, that's Johnny. Then our mentor, Joe Dunham, if he can, or if he's freezing his ass off and he, he can't, doesn't have access to his notes, uh, Stacy will help him. And we'll rate that idea against each of the 36 holistic principles. Presenter will have the chance to respond to the principles, potentially agreeing or disagreeing or choosing to improve his idea. And, and uh, each principle is then highlighted in the chat where the audience comments on the idea in light of that principle. Due to time constraints, only one of the participants will be randomly selected to speak their comment out loud. And the presenter will then have two minutes to respond to the comments, after which the co-presenter will bring up the next principle. If time allows, the presenter and the host can then open the meeting for a general roundtable discussion with all the participants. So at that time, please type hands up in the chat and you'll be given a chance to talk. And let's get started.
Um, Johnny, are you ready? Did Johnny disappear? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. We lost Johnny. I'm going to pause the recording. Two, one. Okay. All right, since we have lost Johnny for temporarily, uh, let me get started. Uh, Johnny's uh, with reading Johnny's idea, uh, Johnny Garza's idea, revolution for recapturing the state. Introduction. This idea forms a strategy to take back our country from those wealthy oligarchs who rule over us in the name of neoliberalism. It can be repeated around the world. Goal and purpose of this idea to settle once and for all the character of a people in this nation, to make it clear to themselves and the world who we really are and accept the consequences. Core philosophy, based on the presuppositional apologetics, character of a culture and fear, concepts employed, cooperative game theory, national patriotism, revolution, minimal but extremely effective public involvement, making analogies to nature, critical mass, and herd mentality. Is he back yet? <laughs> no. Did you want to just continue? So. Yeah, I, I think go ahead and read the whole thing and hopefully he'll be back when and be able to comment. I can read if you want me to, Sharon. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right, where would you leave off at? Uh, herd mentality to the idea. Okay, the idea. The idea is to organize and encourage a general strike, maybe better referred as a sick out, to rid ourselves, or at the very least, regulate the parasites. Fire sectors of our economy, finance insurance, and real estate, involving two key industries, the trucking industry and the waste management garbage collectors, with the idea being those two workers are our new political representatives. Recognize these two industries have the power and the courage to recapture from the oligarchs our republic. They will strike, or in parentheses, sick out if three demands are not met by midnight, May 15, 2022. Presuppositions. Before we give the demands, we must first recognize some presuppositions, which are as follows. Number one, the Senate and Congress for the main part do not represent working class people in America and haven't for some time now. Number two, we can have confidence our institutions give us fair elections. This has been true for some time now as well. Number three, those who control the levers of power are so powerful it is hard to imagine how we can challenge it. Short and armed revolution, which we are adamantly against. And number four, while protests and civil disobedience do give us results, it falls away short of eradicating the neoliberalism. The strategy, number one, encourage working class citizens to visit truck stops and waste management facilities around the country, passing out flyers and ribbons, informing them of a sick out and to sustain this activity until May 15, 2022. Is he back? I just let in Joe. Um... Uh, Johnny is on his way back, but he is not back yet. Okay, awesome. 2022 groups of people can inform and organize different days to work on this. With maybe three groups of 10 people, this can be accomplished. A truck driver should be able to travel from coast to coast and expect the same flyer to appear on his door in the morning when he gets ready to go to India and frame it as revolution. And that the people are looking to our new representatives with equal power, the American truck driver and the local garbage collector to demand right and proper representation from our elected officials. The roles. The revolutionary 10 per community organize and pass out the flyer at truck stops and waste management facilities. Groups of revolutionaries will inevitably meet and organize and make it a less taxing activity. Three groups of 10 can sustain daily pressure on our new representatives for month and months. The general public no more protests against companies or riots on the streets, but rather uses social media promoting the revolution and the need to pressure our own. What is this? Someone put up the uh, messenger thing on the screen. 
Um, so uh, where was I at? Need to pressure our rep own representatives into a sick out. Put on the red ribbon on their car mirror showing support and solidarity. Social media be out on the streets reporting the mood of the country and our new representatives and give good arguments for the need for a sick out. The new representatives, the truck driver and the garbage collector, recognize they have the power to represent the working class people as themselves are and have the courage to do the right thing, get rid of the parasite once for all. Our elected representatives take seriously the threat of an economy where all eyes and attention is focused on power. Mainstream media continue doing what they do to propagandize um, and expose themselves even more. Business and the parasites come to an agreement Adante learned from the Congress in 1917 that gave into a people with power. The fear, if we as a nation do not stop the rule of men over us and the world we must and will be held accountable for our cowardice and undeserving freedoms, what little we have left of them, there is no such thing as neutrality. You can't say you don't get involved in politics because politics is very much involved in you. Each and every individual will be held accountable to the nation that makes war on us due to the lack of courage to stop ruthless oligarchs that feel they have the right to take from nations. The character of a people is at stake here. You either stand and fight or cower and succumb to the rule of men. Go down, please. Scroll down. The flyer. Please copy, paste, share, and visit truck stops and waste management faculties around the country. No leadership required just decency. Political activists, here's your new job. Find the time to visit your local truck stop and waste management company and pass out these flyers along with two ribbons. Lobby those who have power, the American truck driver and the garbage collector on your behalf. Do it consistently and daily and share it on Facebook and any, of, any and all of the social media you participate in. Wear the red ribbon yourself and on our car as you commute. Uh, in honor of those who have lost their lives under this era of the rule of men. Here it is, and thank you for loving me and mine. Okay, thank you, Tommy. Uh, Johnny, we got started without you. Can you hear us? Johnny? More technical problems. <laughs> All right. Hello. Two, one. The American people have found their source of power over those that now rule us, the oligarchs and their minions. For the sake of decency, we the people are asking you to be our heroes and go on a general strike or a sick out on May 15, 2022, unless the following three demands in order are met. If our vanguard, our new political representatives, truckers and garbage collectors are forced to strike, then those demands turn to six before they go back to work. Number one, that the federal government pass an amendment giving us free and fair elections best written by Lawrence Lessig. Number two, that the House and Senate bring to the floor for a vote and for a number three, that the media be a public utility not owned by any individual or corporation, best written by Chris Hedges. If a period of 24 hours passes before these bills are not passed, then the truck drivers and garbage collectors will go on a general strike and not return till three additional demands are met. Number four, 250,000. Treasury, $250,000 treasury bond be given to all class A and B drivers, including owners, operators, that can prove they received no check the following days, and all garbage collectors that can prove the same. Number five, that both industries will from that point going forward receive a 20% subsidy in addition to their current income to be paid by the federal government. And number six, that our federal government pass a federal jobs guarantee bill. We the people believe we should reward American heroes handsomely for having the courage to do what all working class people believe is right and decent, the first three demands. And we can do this because we understand power. We understand modern money and the perversion of its over the last 40 years. We show our resolve, solidarity and strength by placing a red ribbon on our front mirrors, the truck driver, and wear a red scarf, the garbage collector, and on our cars, the public, in honor of those who have lost their lives during this time of the world of men. For the sake of our prosperity, have courage and do what you know is right and decent. 
Congress and Senate are hated because they are cowards and self-serving. You are beloved because you are one of us, decent and brave. No leadership required, just decency and courage. Thank you, Tommy. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Tommy. Um, now we are ready for um, the first principle. Um, are you going to do it, Stacy? Yes, I have it here. Okay, go ahead. Number one, holistic principle number one, does this idea diminish or cause harm to anyone? This first principle examines whether any form or scale of harm is caused from teasing and labeling to destruction of the multiverse. Joe's comment, terms like parasites and those wealthy oligarchs who rule over us in the name of neoliberalism pose the danger of painting your adversary into an ideological corner, potentially hampering their ability to negotiate and find solutions. Okay, I need to rest respond to that, Stacy. Yes. Yep. So, Johnny, you will have uh, two minutes to respond, and then we will take a comment from the chat. Okay, so here we go, got the timer. Uh, in a revolution, in a revolution, it's either you're for or you're against. There's no such thing as neutrality. As far as causing, causing harm, for sure people will be harmed uh, in the sense that you, um, you have a proposition to either be on the, the, the right side or be on the wrong side. So uh, I believe the other point was, uh, could you remind me, tell me again what the other point was as far as um, uh, the, terms like parasites and yes, oligarchs pose the yes. danger of painting your adversary right. and also potentially hammering their ability to negotiate and find solutions. Right. In, uh, in a revolution, there's no good negotiations. You're either for or against. Uh, the, um, as far as the language, the language is set to provoke emotion. We know that uh, in a revolution and when you're fighting against your adversary. Uh, we know that rationality, as, as proven by Edward Bernays uh, in the early uh, part of the last century, uh, used propaganda to move a people into action. So uh, the words and the provocation are intended to provoke and intended to cause emotion. And that emotion is what drives people. Now the drive, again, the proposition is either for or against. So uh, as far as harming people, people will be harmed in revolution. What I'm trying to do is do it in such a way that minimizes the harm and so that this is not a, a violent revolution, but through peaceful, thoughtful, strategic, and powerful action, we can show the other side actually are using the volume and that's a minute and 49 seconds. Thank you. Okay, um, I would like to comment, when you say there will be no harm, but the, if this goes to a strike, uh, which you, I believe, are prepared to do, then how many people would be harmed by the strike itself? And you have uh, one minute to respond. Very good. Uh, the number of people harmed by the strike would be those who do not recognize that we are in revolution and do not take a stand. And what I mean by do not make a stand, that are either ignorant or willfully siding on the opposite side. So. Uh, yes, you will be harmed. In other words, if it, if it goes to uh, a strike, then uh, you will feel the pain in the sense that you won't have the money to make your payment. But when you do that, then you recognize that you're either for or against revolution. Okay, number, the holistic principle number two, does the idea obey the law? Joe's comment is, I'm not sure if just anyone allowed at a truck yard, I'm not sure if just anyone is allowed at a truck yard, but it seems potentially dangerous and contentious to send teams of people to these places to leave flyers with strong political messages on them. I don't know the trucking or waste collection culture well enough, but my limited reasoning tells me that people might get hurt. Go ahead, John, you have two minutes yes. to respond. Uh, yes, I thought of that. Uh, being private property, uh, you could uh, argue that that is a uh, private property and that you, they don't have any business soliciting uh, anything, right? So yes, that's a potential danger. Uh, but in revolution, I think that's a small price to pay. 
uh, instead of an armed violent revolution. And uh, we could be smart about it. Uh, we could, you know, actually be smart and uh, get get the officer's attention one way while the other people do another way. Yes, indeed. I cannot argue that it could be potentially dangerous, but revolution uh, is dangerous. Uh, in the past, we have had violent revolutions. I think this uh, would be one less less violent. Uh, but uh, the nature of the argument, the nature of what we're doing is and can be uh, dangerous. Very good, thank you. Number holistic, or have we covered, we, did we get one from the chat? Um, no, go, go ahead, number three. Okay. I don't think, it, uh, number, does anybody have any comment on number, number two, uh, obey the law? Okay, go on to number three. Okay, number three, does this idea lend itself to honest and clear language through definitions? Joe's comment is, I find some issues with your core philosophy in this regard. First, you say it is based on presuppositional apologetics. In that way, you are being clear. What is not clear to me is presuppositional politics itself. Explanation, which I have found to find the explanation which I have found defines this as a dismissal of all arguments and viewpoints outside of the teachings of Christ and the Bible. I do not understand the connection between this and objectives and methods being proposed. Is it simply a broader secular use of the word which evokes the same dismissive posture? In this case, dismissing any argument that the organized threat of a sick out is not the only way? Two minutes. Okay, yes, the uh, presuppositional apologetics is, comes from the Christian philosopher Cornelius Van Til, who was very controversial, controversial at the time, which uh, posited that there is no such thing as neutrality, either you're for or against, and that every individual knows deep inside within himself the truth of the matter. If given a proposition, he knows the truth but suppresses it in, in unrighteousness. It is all very, very much intended to be religious. Uh, the red represents not only the death of uh, individuals during the rule of men, but it also could represent for that individual who is Christian and religious, could also represent the judgment of God on a nation. Uh, when God passed over the Israelites during, uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? The, the Passover, they all had to do something to be passed over. Yes, it is very much intended to fear, to, to, to invoke uh, religious beliefs. As I stated before, the uh, not before, but this is a saying of mine, all political uh, discourse is really conversation starters for religious belief systems. So when I call a revolution, I tell people, men, that you either, either have to stand and fight or be a coward and be ruled by the rule of men. What I'm saying is what Van Til would say is that there's no way around this. You have to you either stand for something true and correct and write what you know in your heart is right, or you don't. So uh, yes, the language is very provocative as far as, yes, I am being deceitful, uh, but no more, and that's deceitful in the sense that I'm using language that provokes, provokes emotion, which deep inside every single individual knows that I'm telling them the truth. That's a minute and 53. Damn, I'm doing good. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you very much, Johnny. Uh, so Daniel has a comment. If this is a unilateral, excuse me, if this is a unilateral demand with the threat of harm that would seem illegal as a terrorist threat in some legal circles, Johnny, you have one minute. Uh, uh, cause harm is a threat is terrorist. Well, um, those that say uh, that this is a, a threat as a terrorist attack, compare that to what the rule of men are doing here in America and around the world. So uh, to that, I would say there's no such threat uh, as terrorism. Uh, I, don't, I don't view it as a threat. I view it as men being men and cowards being cowards. Okay, holistic principle number five. Is this idea simple? Does this idea choose simplicity over complexity? Joe's comment is, the idea is both simple and potentially very effective in reaching its stated goal. 
With a bit of work and modest amount of organizing, participants will have a clear view of what needs to happen and their role in executing that. So I don't know if you have two, two minutes of comments. That's a, he's just agreeing with you there, Johnny. Do you have any comments? Yes, I, I completely agree with her. And that the simple in the sense that the, the strategy is very much on purpose. Take, for instance, the second set, the second three points. If we do, in fact, go on strike and the truck driver and the garbage collector fears for his job, then the third, uh, the last requirement would be a jobs guarantee program, which automatically gives that individual who stuck his the neck out for the people an, uh, a guaranteed job at a living wage with living benefits. So um, yes, it's, uh, it's, it, it is strategic in the sense that um, if, and it's simple, uh, it's really simple. This is what really gets me about this whole thing. People talk about, this isn't fair, we need to do better and we could have a better society and so on and so forth. And all you really have to do is wear red. The last thing the oligarchs want, the last thing that men who rule over men want is all eyes on them and their power. So what we force individuals to do is to make a choice, either the rule of men and cow cower under the rule of men or fight like men over against. And when you do that, what you do and you put people in a position where they have no paycheck on purpose, you ask that person has to ask himself, why am I without a paycheck? And the answer to that question is, as he looks across America, is that because men stood and fought against the rule of men and we're a country of a rule of law. So um, so it's simple. Just wear red and tell everybody to wear red and tell them why you're wearing red. And you'd be surprised in, a, in two years we could have free and fair elections. Now, will it fix everything? No, but it makes a huge step in the right direction. So, and then enter, then enters Bill Black. And if you don't know Bill Black, agarrate, as you would say in Spanish. Two minutes. Damn, I'm doing good. <laughs> awesome. All right. We don't have any comments. I will move on to six and seven, which are uh, con combined. Does this idea prioritize viability of the whole and benefit the most in number over the few? Joe's comment is it tries to do this, but in a very unsafe way. If the lawmakers truly are parasites, then they will have no care for the people of this nation beyond their manageability and how that affects their power base. So in order to elicit a favorable response from our government, it seems we would have to do tremendous damage to ourselves. Blocking the flow of consumption and waste, our, our two most essential needs, would certainly cause hardship and result in civil unrest. What we don't know is how much of that the powers that be will either ignore or tolerate before they either comply or end it by force. Two minutes, Johnny. Yes, indeed. Um, Gandhi. Gandhi moved a whole nation and ridiculed the British Empire by just being truthful and honest and brave. Now, I'm no Gandhi, God knows, right? But the idea, the idea is if, it, we, if we were to go to that extent that we were to, to suffer hardship uh, below the rule of men, then I would say that the strategy is to make sure that when we get close to that time and it looks like they're not gonna budge, to save your green beans, save your paper towels and be prepared to really truly be free for six weeks because we figure that by in six weeks, we convince the police officer that, 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 that protects the, the beast and the parasite, and that's what we call them, the beast and the parasite, that they have got to, uh, they've got to uh, go home to their wives and their children and say to themselves, the people of the light are here to destroy the people, the rule of men, the beast and the parasite that rule over men. And I'm here to protect that beast. So don't you worry. You know, don't you worry, you're going to feed, you're going to get to eat because the beast feeds you because they're all about money. They're not about society. They're not about decency. So um, the, uh, the, the, the point was, is that if it gets to that point, then we should, should, if we're true to what we're saying and we're consistent, give them everything they want. Give them everything. Stand there with our families, with our arms wide open and say, you want to control me? Then control me. You have one day, 
And at that day, when that day is over, then I'm gonna walk you out of the White House. And if you're a soldier, or if you're a policeman standing, be aware and understand that you're fighting for the beast. And I'm a, a person of the light, of the light, and I'm here in the, in the name of decency. That's it. Okay, so we have a comment from Daniel. Vehicles are on the verge of full self-driving, which would prevent 50,000 plus deaths and millions of injuries per year. Why is this not factored, factored into this proposal? You have one minute, Johnny. Yeah, um, it is factored in the sense that I think that we have a really good opportunity to do it right now. After 10 years, uh, yes, technology could be such that, that this power is taken away. So we're uh, on top of the fact that we have global warming and, you know, uh, we're getting worse and worse. We don't know if we have 10 years before we have a full, full, full blown out authoritarian state and there's no freedoms left at all. So yes, uh, um, yeah, that's in, taken into consideration. We need to move fast on this. Okay, principle number eight. Does it include all by always providing a path to compliance and inclusion? Joe's comment is, this is very iffy in that it doesn't seem to allow ordinary people, especially truck drivers and sanitation engineers, a chance to not be labeled as for or against this cause and the methods it employs. It also mentions nothing of there being any kind of negotiation or give and take with lawmakers. You have uh, two minutes, John. That's a great point. Uh, that's a really great point. Right now, we saw just recently an argument between the Movement for a People's Party and uh, the uh, Our Revolution LA. And what they're fighting about was leadership style and a lot of other things. Uh, my argument, my strategy is to focus on just three things. So the negotiation really isn't there. What it is, is number one, we understand the core thing, the one thing that if there's two things that really, really is impacting our society and the rule of men is number one, that we have no free and fair elections, that we have two elections, as Loris Lessig would say, one, the first one uh, by the oligarchy, and then we get the leftovers. That's a rule of men. And number two, that uh, as Noam Chomsky would say, manufacturing consent. There's no other opposing voice. That too, those two combinations is so powerful that it is very, very hard to, uh, to combat. So when we talk about negotiations, there's no room for negotiations. We're in revolution. There is no negotiation. It's either the rule of men or the rule of law. Uh, no negotiations. And this is what makes it really uh, uh, important as well. We're not talking about, well, it'll turn into socialism or it'll turn into fascism or this and that and that and this. This is very simple. It's two, uh, two things, two things and two things only, because we know that those two things are the core of what is going on. We take care of those two things and then you can talk to me about communism, you can talk to me about fascism, but you can't talk to me unless we first take care of those two things. So that's it. Oh, All God. right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joe, I would like to ask if Joe has any comments here. He's joined us by phone. Joe, would you like to say anything? Yeah, um, so, uh, First of all, I have to say what I really like about this idea is that it, it is leaderless and that the people will know when to stop striking. Then that will be when the you know, lawmakers um, you know, comply with their wishes. However, if the lawmakers don't comply with their wishes, um, the people are excluded in any decision making process. There is no leader to say, oh, this has gone on too long. We have to stop in case it ever gets to that point. So um, there is no way to stop this revolution if people change their minds. Um, if it goes on too long and, you know, there's no one there to put the brakes on. Um, can I respond to that? You have one minute. Okay. Yes, that's a good point. Uh, when then can you say, um, I would have to say, and that's an excellent point, Joe, I think that the best thing I could do, we could do there is ask the, uh, those, Lawrence Lessig, uh, Chris Hedges, and I would add Bill Black, uh, if anybody don't know who he is, uh, and have those three get together and decide, okay, enough is enough. 
this is where we're going. But this is only after we walk these lawmakers out. The Movement for a People's Party hopefully will work with this effort and have in the ready the delegates to make the, uh, the Constitutional Convention and even replace the representatives that do no, no, no longer represent the people. But you raise an excellent point. It is uh, one flaw. If there's any, when does it stop? And it could get terrible. And you know, they would jump at that, Joe. They would jump at that in the New York Minute. That's to their advantage. Thank you very much. Uh, this is our last principle that we will cover tonight. We are jumping from eight to 20. 20 is, does this idea align decision-making with entity published direction goals, principles, and guidance? Does it create a plan to ensure decision-making based on some commonly understood directive, along with common sense, balanced principles, ethics, and morals? Joe's comment is, what I don't get a sense of is who holds the off switch for a sick out in the event that, neg that negotiations either take too long or fail, how is a decision made to call it off? By the same token, how is the decision made to keep it going? Two minutes. Yeah, how is a decision made to keep it going? That's a difficulty, indeed. Um, I would have to say that those three men, Bill Black, Lawrence Lessig, and, Lessig, and Chris Hedges would would be the ones because it is them that we're going to look to to satisfy the uh, the people. Them, the, the those three gentlemen are are trustworthy and would get, uh, would do the right thing. Um, and I think that yeah yeah that that would have to be it. Um, it so yeah, I, I can't see any other way. Of course, you know if we do get to that point. Is it possible that a whole society can stop working for six weeks and actually, actually, truly give themselves to the oligarchy with the heart and mind that says, control me then? What else can a, a, a people do that's being ruled? I can't live like this. I'd rather, I'd rather have you control me for a day and give you, give you what you want and then walk you out. Now, I know it's out there. I know it's outrageous, but if you're true and consistent to your beliefs, then that's exactly what you do. That's exactly what you do. And there's the off switch. The off switch is when people are true to their spirit and say, and give the enemy what's he, what he wants and love him. Love him, truly love him and say, then control me. And when you're done controlling me, then go to your house and live in peace. Your money and your wealth and your rule because I can't live by it anymore. So that's the off switch. Can All we, right. are we spiritual enough to do that? That's a good question. Okay, I think um, we went through all of the principles that we wanted to go through at this time. Um, let's open up to um, comments and questions from yeah. the audience. I believe Tommy, you wanted to raise a point. Oh, um... The, it was it was based on the um, one that when he mentioned, um, are we going everywhere now on the whole thing? Or yeah, we, yeah, you're free to go. Okay, cool. <laughs> I didn't want to be off. Uh, oh, 50 seconds? Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, um, the uh, one way was, uh, was it cause a harm? Would it, what was it, uh, Stacey? You said it would it cause harm to the public if we went on a strike? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is that it? it? The first principle is do no harm. Is there any yeah, harm so, caused by this? So um, a strike, um, do I just say whatever? I don't know how I'm supposed to comment really, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, free for all now. Okay, okay, so yeah, having a strike, I, you know, doing is taking away the, well, from my understanding, if I'm understanding it right, taking away the truck driver, you know, for, for transporting goods and taking away the garbage collector, you know, getting rid of trash, those two major services, um, that would cause a lot of um, problems, you know, cause a lot of harm to getting people what they need because people are highly dependent on not local, you know, um, manufacturers and local um, warehouses and stuff. You know, they get everything transported all across the country and imported, you know, from um, out of the into the from the countries to into the United States. You know, so so stopping that would cause a lot of harm, um, I believe, having a strike. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I can say, um, if I can respond to that, yes, it would. But at the same time. There's no other power that I can see that can turn this around. That you have to meet power with power. And if that means that you're gonna suffer, 
then your suffering is for the right reason. You have to make a choice and you, it forces people to make a stand. So yes, you're absolutely right, Tommy. But sometimes you gotta hurt. Sometimes you gotta suffer. But if you're suffering for the right reason, then I'll suffer all day long. Okay, uh, who's next? Daniel. Um, yeah, I mean, um, in medicine, do no greater harm is usually how the Hippocratic Oath is framed. It means try the, the least invasive thing that might possibly work. And if that doesn't work, then move on to something that's the next level up of invasiveness or potential harm. Uh, so, I mean, I could see, you know, something as radical as shutting down the supply chain, you know, after everything else that's less invasive has been tried. But I think going immediately to that step is a little bit over the top. I would propose the quality vote where we go from binary voting to vector voting using hashtags and things like Stacy's three-dimensional cube of uh, particle vectors, uh, which I would encourage you to look at at her great website, uh, oneworld411.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, if I may respond to that. Um, actually, I think that this is the simplest way. And it's the most effective way in the sense that Imagine, if you will, an oligarchy, hedge fund managers, profit share people, people with power that make the decisions face a sea of red, all focused on power. Now, I think this is the least evasive and the most simplest and the easiest in the sense that how is it that an oligarchy is going to hold up to that? It forces them it, it, the, the last thing a cockroach wants is the light to be turned or, turned on. Once the light turns on, they spread like crazy. So I think it is that simplistic, that least evasive idea that if everybody were get a, to get on board, they would cower. And they would realize that we have a society, they, they are focused on two different powers here. And they know, and everybody knows deep in their heart, we're being ruled by men. So I actually think that it's actually the easiest way, the most effective way, and the, and the least harmful way, because it happened before in 1917. Uh, the uh, senators were pressed, pressured so much by the Congress that they succumbed and made an amendment to the Constitution. But that was back then. Today, there is no pressure. There is no power meeting power. They do what they want, and we suffer the consequences. Thank you. I'm not timing myself, so I'm going to start. I think I cheated there. OK. Um I have a comment. Um, while I do believe that uh, there's obvious victims and winners from our capitalist system, I don't believe um, the, the rich people are actually, their intention is to rule over other people. They, there's, the rich people have just figured out the game. Now, I don't mean all rich people, of course. There are many corrupt and many criminal uh, behavior that cause huge sums of cash to be um, accumulated. But regardless, I believe that um, we, we need to redesign the game, right? Um, and, and here's where I think um, maybe the assumption is uh, off that, that uh, these rich people actually, you're, I think you're making the assumption that if we shut things down, that they actually have the answer and they're just hiding the answer and they have the answer to the better system. I, and that's where I don't believe, you know, I think they're confused too. <laughs> they don't know how it is to make people happy and uh, how to create a fair uh, system. It's just that we're all stuck in this religion of capitalism and, and you know, they, they don't even, you know, they don't want to rule over people. They want a fair system as well. They're, they're confused as well. That's my comment. Uh, if if I could comment to that and respond to that, uh, Carol Quigley's book, Tragedy and Hope, and then Joseph Plummer's uh, more uh, smaller version, Tragedy and Hope 101, makes the point that these people have no allegiance to anybody but themselves, and that they are in fact ready and willing to rule over the world, NAFTA, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and the attack on sovereign nation. Uh, it is the power of our currency it gives us our, 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 uh, our sovereignty. And uh, I don't know, I, 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 it is an assumption. True, definitely an assumption. And I'm going by this assumption because 
That's what I see. And uh, these people are not going to stop um, unless they are stopped. So, yes, there are people like Nick Hanauer out there that, you know, understands that, you know, the pitchforks are coming. And God bless them. There are a few people out there. They're not all like this. But for the main part, they have so much power that they have uh, they have the, uh, the ability and the means to control everybody else. You want a nice job? You better think like me. Thanks. So are we ready to move to the um, closing comments by everybody? Okay. So um, this time, let's uh, let everybody uh, one at a time um, go with our closing comments. Uh, Cesare, you were, you're, are you still there? We're going, hoping to go by alphabetical order. So Cesare, you're always first because there's no A's and B's. And I, I've been listening, but I don't have any specific comments. <coughs> I've just been listening to y'all discuss this. In the okay, back. no Thank problem. You. Daniel? Yeah, I, I think this is uh, obviously not the least invasive solution. Uh, you're jumping right to something that's potentially extremely invasive to the social economic order. And I think you're actually, you know, empowering uh, the game that exists by saying that it, it uh, can't work uh, when it is working somewhat to some degree. I mean, you're just assuming that it has zero functionality and zero usefulness for everyone, which is obviously not a supportable assumption that I can see from the evidence. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Uh, Kevin? Yeah, you know, I really, uh, I really think you're on to something, Johnny. I think that there's a global consciousness, you know, you know, climate, if climate reality, planetary systems break down the youth movement, you know, Greta Thunberg and what she was nominated for Nobel Peace Prize or whatever, you know, like the youth movement around the world is growing. Um, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I think now's the time. I, I, I just wonder if, if uh, you're thinking big enough, you know. Because I think what we what we need is is like a, it's an international general strike, you know. The difference. What are we in? Uh, I think it was like three or four months ago. I remember hearing something on the news that like there was something like between one third and fifty percent of the world's population was in some form of quarantine. And I thought to myself, you know, the only difference between an international quarantine and a planetary general strike, the only difference is the permission. All right, thank you, so, Kevin. Um, Ramses, are you there? Oh yes, guys. So I have been listening to this awesome. Yeah, I'm sorry for not contributing that much, but I have been listening to it. I enjoy the conversation. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Rancis. Uh Tommy? Oh, I'll go next. Yeah, I, I'm going to leave uh, Stacy and uh, uh, Joe, uh, even though it's not alphabetical. <laughs> so, yeah. Tommy. Um, I don't think I really... Um... I need, to, I need to review this probably more to see the whole idea, you know, but, um, but as far as uh, using a strike, um, I believe that the, uh, when they use the uh, whole uh, protesting police brutality, you know, in the United States, it really, it caused a quick shift because of people rioting and protesting. And it was an extreme thing that was, that was harmful towards people's businesses, but it created sudden change. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't, I personally don't have a problem with a strike because I believe it'd be short term because I see how bad it hurt the economy. 
um, and they would um, respond to the public's, uh, you know, the public's uh, um, voice. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, Stacy, we go before Joe. Yeah, uh, this was a really, really interesting idea. And I, I personally am concerned about all of the harm that is potentially in there without a lot of planning. And I'm all about holistic and non-harmful planning. And I would um, offer my services, John, to help you work on all the details. I mean, I have a book that's out about creating proper governance and communications and procedures. And uh, I would love to get my procedures on your idea. So if you have any interest in that, please let me know. Oh, thank and you. thank you so much. Great session. Awesome. Thank you, Stacy. Um, Joe? Uh, yeah, Johnny, um, I am full agreement that people have to make some form of sacrifice in order to actually uh, get change to happen. I do think there needs to be an off switch. And I also um, think that it's very possible that the powers that be won't care how much we hurt ourselves to get that change. So we got to do something and it might be what you're talking about, but we got to you got to think about, you know, more uh, details in the strategy. And I also want to um, uh, clarify something. I uh, sure when you mentioned how the um, uh, how this crucible came about, I want to make sure that uh, Stacy gets credit because it was actually I who sought her out to uh, rate my idea against her principles. Uh, she didn't seek me out. I, I sought out her, and uh, I want to say thanks, Stacy, for putting those principles together. Um, we've really got a true. I guess amalgamation, amalgamation of really great ideas and um, really happy to see this second uh, presentation flow and go so great this time. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Um, you still deserve the credit. I remember it was the three of us in a room and we're thinking, oh, where should we do it? And Joe says, why don't we try this? So you're the dude, man. Um, anyways, uh, Johnny, um, I, I think, uh, well, I know some rich people and trust me, they're dumb as fuck, just like politicians. Nobody has the answer really. And problem may well, with the strikes, it might well not work because you know all the major um, corporations, they, they already can run without people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you may well not be even affecting the, the, the people that you want to. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for your idea. Thank you for expressing it so, uh, um, so clearly, thoughtfully. And I'll, ha I'll let you have the final word, Johnny. Okay. Thank you all very much for uh, joining me tonight. You didn't have to, but you took time out of your day to, uh, to, 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 to be here and listen and hear me out. So I want to thank you, Stacy. I definitely want to get with you on uh, your book. Uh, and uh, yes, Joe, you, you raise a definitely good point. Uh, there's got to be an off switch if it does go that far. And yes, it, it could be very bad. It can go very bad. Um, the idea is to fight neoliberalism. And neoliberalism, as you know, is the idea that profit over people, that Everything is to be commodified. Everything has a price. And, um, and they're moving in such a way that crosses borders and tears down sovereignty. So the idea, I believe, is not only, I believe, starts here in America, because I truly believe in my heart that we are the ones that really push neoliberalism in a big way through a lot of our courts, Citizens United and the, the fact that you know, the corporations are now treated as flesh and blood human beings. So it's a incumbent upon us, the people of America, to look inwardly and as individuals and be culpable for that which we know is true in our hearts, that, um, that there's, there's good and bad. It's not so much the winning, but more the journey. I'll lose all day and I'll die all day, but I'll die fighting. I'll die fighting. So thank you so much, everybody, for your input. And I'm definitely going to regroup, think this thing through, think this thing through a little bit more. And uh, hopefully with you, Stacey, 
uh, and uh, anybody else who wants to help me improve on it, um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank very you, much. Johnny. Thank you very much, Johnny. That's exactly what we're hoping to do to make you um, better with your ideas. Um, now, as, as closing, if you like the ideas presented, log on and support them in agorailp.org. Also in Agora, you will find information for our upcoming meetings. And finally, like and join our group, Citizen Assembly on Facebook. Either after meeting or separate meeting, Stacy Gustafson, co-creator of the Crucible, is available to discuss her own constitutional checklist of 36 holistic principles, or even to help you develop a set of your own. Contact her for more information. Thank you very much. Okay, we're done.